Today, students, we're going to start with the next chapter of uh, Hornbill, that is the ailing planet, the green movement's role, right? And uh, yes, I would say it's a very uh, apt day, a very appropriate day to start with this chapter because today it is also World Environment Day. And we have realized that, yes, taking care of the environment is a very serious issue. Yeah, we all need to do a bit to make sure that the environment is uh, safe, right? And uh, just a minute. And we keep it in good condition for the future generations also. And, uh, you know, like in the past one year, we have realized that how connected we are in this world. We cannot assume ourselves or we cannot think that we are living in isolation from other places. So what happens in one part of the world, it affects other parts, right? And uh, yes, so like we have been discussing about global warming for so many years, we're talking about climate change, we're talking about the melting of the glaciers, we're talking about the declining or the reducing green cover. All these are serious issues that we really, really need to address. And each one of us has a role to play. So being a World Environment Day today, I think so we all should really think about in what ways can we contribute to saving the environment. So even if we are there able to, you know, like, yes, uh, stop wasting water, I think so that is our contribution. If we are able to reduce the use of plastic, that is our little contribution. If we're able to plant a tree, if not once every year, maybe in two years, if you are able to do something, I think so that is a big effort, right? So when we are there, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives also, we can share our little bit, right? So showing more concern towards the environment because that is something that really needs to be taken care of. We just cannot create a new ecosystem or a new environment for us. And one thing is there that what we are doing, the damage that we are doing to the environment is definitely going to, you know, confront us in the coming years. So look about the quality of drinking water, how it has deteriorated. The crops there, right? So much fertilizers and pesticides that goes into the soil that it ends up coming inside our stomachs only. Right? So we have to take care of these little things. We do talk about organic farming and during this lockdown, many people have picked up gardening as a hobby or they have renewed the interest that they had in hobby, you know, gardening. So they've started, uh, yes, maybe growing their own vegetables and little things like that. So it gives us happiness also. It keeps us busy also. And yes, we are doing our bit to maybe save the environment so we're not letting all the chemicals go inside the soil what do you think you can do as students yes as uh, like of course not only as students but as individuals as concerned individuals as uh, individuals that are concerned about the environment what can you do all these things that we have discussed each one of you can uh, you know like contribute yes so we really need to take care of our environment. And this chapter, rather, this is an essay by Nani Palkiwala. And it was written in the 70s. If we talk about it, if we read it even today, the thoughts, the ideas are very, very relevant, right? So when we talk about our planet, do you think it is really our planet? Does it really belong to us? Are we the only owners of this planet? Who else inhabits this planet along with us? Yes? Who else inhabits this planet along with us? So there are so many species, so many species, right? 
yes and it is our responsibility if we are there uh, you know at the top of the evolutionary ladder we consider ourselves to be very intelligent uh, right yes and we have the ability to think uh, and uh, make changes so we also should have that empathy to understand that all the species all the animals that are here on this earth have every right to be alive and so we should be considerate about their presence on this earth and what has happened because of our habits because of you know hunting and because of excess of fishing we have really brought a lot of damage to the environment yes absolutely yeah the animals are living with us the flora and fauna yeah we have to take care of them so it's very very true very good answers you all have given right okay now so the ailing planet and the green movement's role ailing planet what do you think ailing means what does ailing mean yes what does ailing mean anyone ailing means not well yeah you're there right of course uh, you're just recovering from that illness how is the planet not well how is it uh, the planet how is it showing that i am not well how is the planet showing that so we've noticed that in the past couple of years we've seen the skies so polluted the water so polluted we have noticed it how the chemicals have increased uh, in the you know like uh, the vegetables yes we've noticed how the green cover has reduced and as a consequence of that what has happened there are changes which are happening on the earth's surface so what are the things that we can do as you know a sensible citizens as concerned individuals we all can play a part to save the planet so what is a green movement's role what do you think is a green movement yes what do you think yes absolutely correct yeah pollution global warming poor health is a consequence of that so who is responsible for all this now if a problem is happening in one part of the world can we ignore that problem can we ignore it do you think it is not going to affect us it will so that means is uh, you know like uh, can we say that the environment is divided into parts can we divide it that this belongs to this country and it is this country's concern so of course being uh, in uh, that particular geographical area we have to take care of that but we have to realize that in the long term our actions are going to have far reaching consequences we polluting the earth if we polluting the water bodies if we are they indiscriminately cutting off the trees sooner or later that effect it is not only going to be visible in our country but in other places also right so we're talking about the melting of the glaciers we're talking about global warming and then we wonder that why are we concerned about that how is it going to affect us well it is going to affect us right so when i talk about this here what has to be changed it is our approach to this problem once we start start thinking that the earth belongs to us right that we are here a part of this whole ecosystem each one of us has to contribute and if i do something like see in your class if someone is there naughty making noise or creating a disturbance right and if i am not able to identify who it is what happens the whole class gets a scolding yes the whole class has to suffer right or wrong so in this way here if we have across the world if we are not taking care of our planet what is going to happen we are going to suffer we are really going to pay the price for it and yes so here we have lived on an earth that was once green and so beautiful but with the passage of time what has happened there has been such a deterioration right and who is going to get this planet with so many problems you are going to get this planet we as our seniors are going to hand over this planet to you see we did this damage you take care of it is that the right thing to do are you going to accept such a planet from us no 
So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to start being conscious right now. Similarly, we got this planet from our ancestors. We're going to pass it on to you and so on and so forth. So in a way, does any one of us own this planet? No. We are here for a short time, very transitory we are. And in that short time, instead of making damages, instead of creating problems, let us make sure that we take care of this environment. So this approach when we have to think of the planet as a whole, right? It's our holistic view as against a mechanistic view where we think that, okay, it is divided into parts and I have to take my part and take care of that only. I'm not concerned about the rest, but no, we have to take care of it as a whole. We have to be very ecologically conscious, right? And sustainable development, I've shared a video with you all also. I hope you've seen it. And it is about how we can make use of the present resources in such a way that they are wisely used and they are present for the future generations also, okay? Right, so we will now come to this chapter. This is an essay. It is actually lots of facts and so many things here. And uh, yes, here, uh, you know, like we are talking about movements and things that were started in the 70s. And now we really have to uh, increase that pace and make sure that we do more efforts to make, you know, like our planet greener and better. Okay, yes, so now oh, let's start with the chapter now. One cannot recall any movement in world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire human race so completely and so rapidly as the Green Movement, which started nearly 25 years ago. So it's talking about 94. In 1972, the world's first nationwide Green Party was founded in New Zealand. Since then, the movement has not looked back. So we're talking about 70s and then the 90s. So every time, you know, like after a couple of years, and of course, today in the newspaper, if you will have a look, I feel so proud to notice that in our city also, we have people who are environmental activists. So it's really a, a, a very happy thought to know that people are becoming very conscious of the environment. So we have children also being activists, yes? So last year, yeah, we were really heard about a young girl who's been there talking about climate change. Anybody knows her name? Anybody remembers her name? Yes, who was that young girl? Yes? So if you remember, please tell me, okay? I'm giving you time to think, okay? Yes, so the green movement, where did it start? It started in New Zealand. And once that movement began, you know, like, yes. So what do you think the green movement was about? Planting trees, was it? Yes, taking care of the earth, right? And this is the basic, simplest thing that we can do to heal the earth. Now, we have shifted one hopes irrevocably, that means unchanged, let us make it permanent from the mechanistic view to a holistic and ecological view of the world. So big, big terms you're going to get. So please make sure that you write down the meanings in your book as we read, okay? So what is it? So mechanistic, as I told you, that the world here, or of course it can be treated as, uh, the earth can be treated as individual separate units. To holistic view that we are one, it's complete. So what is happening at one place affects others. Right, so this uh, pandemic is definitely one example of that. And uh, ecological view of the world. So ecology is there, that having that understanding with our environment, right? So a life or a lifestyle which makes place for the flora and fauna that are inhabiting this ecosystem along with us, right? Clear, is this clear? Okay, it is a shift in human perceptions, perceptions thought as revolutionary as that introduced by Copernicus, who taught mankind in the 16th century that the earth and other planets revolved around the sun. So it was one that, yes, so we've all thought that it is earth, which is the center of the universe. But no, Copernicus, he came and told us that, no, it is the sun. 
So similarly, we have also to realize that what is the most important for our survival, for our existence, it is our planet Earth. So we have to change our approach. We have to change our thinking. Clear? For the first time in human history, there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the Earth itself is a living organism. So that's why we're saying the ailing planet, right? So it's not well, and the Earth is showing signs. Yes, yeah, so that there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the Earth itself is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts, right? So yes, yeah, so it is there, like, uh, right? So for the first time in human history, there is a growing worldwide consciousness that the earth itself is a living organism, an enormous being of which we are parts, right? We are here because of the earth, not vice versa. So we have to change that viewpoint. We have to change that thinking, right? Okay. Fine. So it is, yes, that's very, very important. We have to make sure that we realize our duty towards the earth, right? It has its own metabolic needs and vital processes which need to be respected and preserved. Yes, I notice few students coming and leaving again and again. What's the problem? We're having network issues. What's the problem? See, her Simran, her Simran has joined about three times. Yes, coming and going. So please sort out your network issues here. Okay. The Earth's vital signs reveal a patient in declining health. We have begun to realize the ethical obligations to be good stewards of the planet and responsible trustees of the legacy to future generations. Right? So the Earth's vital signs. So the doctor looks at the patient, right? Checks the pulse and comes to know that, okay, that something is wrong. So what is the Earth showing? Like, so when we have so many things here, the signs the Earth is giving us, I am not well. So do something to make me feel better, right? So we have to realize these uh, obligations. That is our duty towards the planet Earth. We have to realize that yes, we have to check these signs, right? To find out that what is wrong with the earth and how we can treat them. So it is our obligation, it is our responsibility towards the earth, okay? Right, so this is, which kind of approach are we talking about? It's a holistic view, it's an ecological view. When we realize our responsibility, not towards one part here, or we are locally you know, acting, but across the world, okay? Right. The concept of sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment and Development, right? So sustainable development here, we have discussed what is that? The wise, judicious use of resources, right? So that they are available for the future generations, okay? By the World Commission on Environment and Development, in its report, it defined the idea as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. That is, without stripping the natural world of resources future generations would need, right? So yes, we have to make sure that our resources are used wisely. Our resources are used judiciously, right? So that the future generations do not suffer. But are we doing that? Are we doing that? Looking around, we are still quite responsible. We are still careless. So we need to make sure that the resources are used in such a way that the future generations do not suffer. Okay? So yes, so finding alternative uh, sources of energy, making sure that we have uh, an environmental friendly existence, right? So making that kind of a lifestyle would definitely bring a lot of change okay right yes 
Now, uh, in the zoo at Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage where the notice reads, the world's most dangerous animal. Inside the cage, there is no animal, but a mirror where you see yourself. Thanks to the efforts of a number of agencies in different countries, a new awareness has now dawned upon the most dangerous animal in the world. He has realized the wisdom of shifting from a system based on domination to one based on partnership. Now in Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage in a zoo. And there's a notice, the world's most dangerous animal, right? And when you look inside the cage, what do you see? No animal is there, there's a mirror. And who do you see in the mirror? Yourself. So who is the most dangerous uh, animal? Man is the most dangerous animal. But uh, thankfully, yes, because of uh, so many people here creating awareness, making efforts, we have realized this dangerous animal has realized that how is this planet going to survive? How are we going to survive? We cannot survive if we dominate others, right? That they, I think that I own this planet. No, we have to realize that we all own this planet. So, right, so changing our shift from one of being dominating to one based on partnership, okay? Right, so let me just see if you have understood what we have discussed today. 